Here I have a Haltech IC7 dash uh, for a 2004 Mitsubishi Evo 8. Um, I'm looking into pinning in the left turn signal, right turn signal, parking brake, and probably the high beam as well. Um, I just wanted to show you guys which pin did what and where to pin it in. Um, there's not much info online on how to do all this, so I'm going to be pinning it in and showing you guys every step I go through. Starting off with the left turn signal, I'm actually just going to verify which one I have. Looking at the wiring drag diagram, this light green one should be the power for it, which I should just be able to pin into the ECU and it should work. I just have my power probe and a wire pinned into it to make sure that that one is the one that is getting power. As you can see, it is getting power when the left turn signal is on. That means I have the right wire. If you look at it, it's got pin numbers right here. So following 25 right here, 25, 24, 23, and 22 is the right one for the left turn signal. As I'm pinning this in, I actually figured out you have to push in that connector right there for the pin to actually make its way in. And then once you're done pinning everything in, you just push these back down and it'll lock it back into place. I've got it pinned in, just have to check to see if it does work. And it does. So I'm just gonna follow the wire colors, show you which one and which connector it is. And basically gonna repeat the process for the first one on all the rest of them. Next is the right turn signal, which I already checked and it's that pink wire on that second connector, which is the blue connector right here. So that pink wire next to the yellow and black, I'll just verify that I do get power whenever I turn the right signal on and I'll pin it into the back of the dash. After looking at the schematic from Haltech, I figured out that what I'm going to end up using is pin number 22, 23, 24, and 25. 22 is the left turn like I wired in earlier. 23 is going to be the right turn. 24 is for the handbrake. And then 25 is for the high beam indicator. So I just went ahead and pulled all the pins just so it's easier. Uh, when I do end up pushing the wire in, I already have all these out. To pin in the parking brake signal one, it's going to be on the blue connector. It's going to be the blue and red wire next to the blue and the violet one. For the high beam indicator, it's going to be this red and white wire right next to that light green one from earlier. And that'll be into pin number 25. For the fuel gauge, I'm actually going to be pinning in into one of the analog inputs, which I'm going to use AV1. But you can use any of these four pins right here. They're all just different inputs into the dash. It just has to be calibrated once you get it together. Um, the wire that you need is on the blue connector. It's this white and black next to this yellow wire. So this is what it should look like after wiring everything in. Uh, make sure to push these down to lock the pins in. And then let's connect it to make sure it works. Okay, so I have it pulled up. My parking brake is currently engaged. That's with it down. Back up, left turn, right turn, and high beam indicator. You guys may be wondering why I have these two wires looped together. The yellow with red is the one that powers the stock cluster, and the full red wire is the one that goes to the alternator. Without it, the battery will not charge. Uh, this is a temporary thing. Uh, I will have to add a 3 ohm resistor in the way because it already blew a fuse this way. Um, that will take the load of the light bulb that is in the way between these two wires. It is actually the next day and I have it all figured out. Um, the gauge only seems to go up to 99 no matter what, no matter what voltage input I put in. But the way to do it is if you go to channels, then scroll this thing over. 
and then you want to click on the AVIP4. which is the one I use, which is pin 21, or you can use any of the four pins. Um, you don't have to use the fuel level one. It just works off of a voltage. So input the calibration. And then when the tank is full, it'll be reading zero volts. And when it's empty, it'll be reading 1.46 volts. I actually ended up pulling the pumps up here but Haltech actually puts it in for you. So if you just go to sensor connected, at least for this one, you just do the 90 to zero ohms and it's already preloaded. And then 